We're calling bad influencers, um, but it's basically about rioting, can we call it that? Sort of bad behaviour in central London. This was happening yesterday. We probably have some video to show our uh, viewers, but uh, teenagers basically organised on social media to all um, meet up in various locations around Oxford Street, which is bang smack in the middle central London, very touristy district as well. You can see the, the, riot, the sort of bad behaviour that unleashed. There was a lot of police presence because it was expected. Basically, um, a, a note went out on TikTok TikTok to teenagers, that makes me sound so old, a note, uh, where they were saying to each other, come and meet up outside this particular sports shop and we're going to do a mugging. And, you know, the language used was basically don't come unless you can run and gave people advice on what to wear. And we were just talking about our experiences in Oxford Street recently um, when you go there. And I've been quite shocked recently going. Um, how sort of how much disarray there seems to be i mean paula you went there on monday i went there on monday and i have to say i was shocked i was shocked at the um the amount of homeless people who were there um i was shocked at the amount of shops that were boarded up mm -hmm. um i was just shocked at the general state of the place it looked like it didn't look like the oxford street that no, i know, know. Yeah. Um, but i have to say this story actually isn't about rampaging teenagers this story mm. is about an unregulated social media TikTok, so? absolutely TikTok. Because, I saw people, because what i thought when i saw this was almost a time pre-social media it was the 2011 summer riots which yeah. a lot of us who lived in london at the time really lived through which yes. was essentially bored teenagers with mm. nothing better I mean, to do I can't they went agree nuts with paula there that this is more about social media than it is about a culture well, let me, let me of, i will let you finish your point, point of anti-social yeah. behavior is, Everybody knew this was going to happen. There were messages mm. going backwards and forwards. I'm on TikTok. I put up messages about the law mm. and some of them get taken down. Mm. And it takes me days to say to TikTok, this needs to go back up and this is the reason why. Here we have teenagers, young people who are clearly saying, come and uh, you know, engage in these criminal activities. And TikTok allow these messages to continue? I'm confused by that. No, you're totally right about that. And absolutely, that should not be allowed. I mean, Richard, you've got experience of your own posts being taken down, not on TikTok, but on other platforms. No, it was. I, I was oh. taken down by TikTok from apparently for hate speech and for inciting violence because I didn't want uh, gender questioning and social transitioning in schools. And that's what their lawyers said. And they decided to keep the cancellation. And yet, as Paula quite rightly says, they're quite happy to promote and allow and advertise the, the, you know, a get together for shoplifting and theft. But I don't think we should take away from the fact that there is a culture that has allowed this to happen in the first place. I mean, you've got to think carefully about what is the responsibility of us as a society mm. that we have we are in a position where young people think this is a way of having a, a like a fun night out you know and the reason but, is but about... because there is no real fear of any consequence and the reason for that is that the government has stopped putting pressure on the police to prosecute each and every one mm. of well, uh, the cases of theft. So Suella Braverman, you know, today, Braverman mm. today saying that she wanted each and every one of the teenagers that was involved in this. I think her wording was, don't quote me, that's hunted down or targeted, found, basically. Right, right. And yet yeah, she, right, right, right. she doesn't want to pull up the, the corporate the corporates in relation to this. We, we're not just talking about teenagers who are, you know, participating in criminal activity. We're talking about teenagers who have lost their lives due to the activities of social media and parents who fight and fight and fight and fight and constantly hit brick walls because the government will not rein in social media giants. And here is another example. Let me blame the child, the teenager, the youth, who of course is doing something wrong. Of course they are. I'm not going to take that away from them. But in terms of responsibility, mm -hmm. The responsibility rests with us. The responsibility rests with social media giants who have allowed that to happen. They allowed that to happen. I actually think that's the simplest thing to tackle. You know, mm -hmm. it's not that difficult for the government to crack down on that, to issue very, very clear instructions to social media companies that they cannot allow this. What is much harder to tackle because it is built up over a long period of time is the culture that has uh, allowed us to get into this mm -hmm. place.